In this video, we will explain Coulomb's law of electrostatics and what to watch out for when you are using it for some calculation. Coulomb experimentally found that opposite charges attract and like charges repel each other. Furthermore, he noticed that when you're putting the charges close together, this effect gets stronger, and when you separate them, the attraction or repulsion gets weaker. So how do you describe this mathematically? First of all, let's draw a coordinate system. We'll put the two charges here, calling them Q1 and Q2. Each charge sits at the position R1 or R2, and we will call the vector from one charge to the other R21, which is given by R2 minus R1, and points from Q1 to Q2. The force that is acting on Q2 can now be written as some proportionality constant times Q1 and Q2 divided by the square of their distance. And since forces are vectors, we also need a direction, which is given by the unit vector of R21. Let us check if the experimental observations are correctly implemented in this equation. First, since we divide by the square distance, this means that if we put the charges close together, the force gets stronger. So far, so good. And what about the direction? Looking at the diagram, if Q1 and Q2 are both positive or both negative, the force should point towards the direction of R21. That's correct. And if one of them is positive and the other negative, the force should point opposite to R21, which is also the case. Similarly, we can write down the force that is currently acting on Q1, where we use the vector R12, which points from Q2 to Q1. Since R21 is equal to minus R12, the force on Q1 is equal to minus the force on Q2, which agrees with Newton's third law of motion. One annoying feature of electromagnetism is that the equations we use change depending on which system of units we use. For Coulomb's law, this means that the proportionality factor Ke, which is sometimes called Coulomb's constant, has different values depending on whether we use SI units or some other units. Fortunately, some units are more common than others, so we will show you three commonly used systems of units. First, in the SI system, Ke is equal to 1 over 4 pi times epsilon 0. This epsilon 0 is called vacuum permittivity or electric constant and is given by this numerical value. In summary, when using SI units, the force is given in newtons, the charges in coulombs, the distance in meters, and the vacuum permittivity has units coulomb squared over newton meter squared. Another commonly used system is the so-called CGS system, which stands for centimeter, grams, and seconds. One example of CGS units are the Gaussian units, where the constant Ke is equal to 1 so Coulomb's law looks especially simple. In these units, forces are measured in dyne, charges in stud coulombs, and distances in centimeters. The Heaviside Lorentz system is another example of CGS units. Here, the constant Ke is equal to 1 over 4 pi, and the physical quantities have the same units as in the Gaussian units. However, note that charges in the heaviside lorentz system are defined as the square root of 4 pi times charges in the Gaussian system. So the same charge that is measured to be 1 stud coulomb in the Gaussian system would be measured as the square root of 4 pi stud coulombs in the heaviside lorentz units. As a final remark, Coulomb's law is sometimes written using an r to the third power in the denominator. Don't let this confuse you, because next to it we have a full vector instead of a unit vector. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.